show today so I don't want to keep you guys hanging on because I've been trying to get these two on Sister Strengthening Sisters probably for about maybe about five half a times. year. <laughs> <laughs> a half a year, yeah, about a half a year. And um, one, I've been knowing her for a very long time. We work together. She's just like my daughter. She's such a sweetheart. And she is Danielle and her friend is Kelly. And they're doing some phenomenal things in Atlantic City. I did get to read the article. Um, they're working along with the young people, and they're going to tell you about what it is that they do and how all this came about. So let's welcome Kelly, Kelly, and Danielle. See, it took so long to get them here. Now everything want to mess up. <laughs> Hello. How's everybody this evening? Good, good. So now tell us first start from the beginning of how all this came in. Tell them the name of your pro your show. Your the name issue. of my program is uh, Peace Amongst Youth. Mm -hmm. And we were founded in um, 2016 mm -hmm. after the death of my nephew. Okay. Um, originally, my, my son was murdered um, in 2012 at the age of 13 wow. in Pleasantville, New Jersey due to gun violence. Mm -hmm. And through that time, it was a transition that I wouldn't wish on anybody, I guess, right. you know? And um, it was like I was in a place all by myself for a while. Mm -hmm. And then through social media, through the Facebook, you start seeing, I started seeing my girlfriends or friends of my sisters where it was like a domino effect of them losing their babies to gun violence. Wow. Every time you turned on the TV, every time yes. you got online, mm -hmm. it was just one after the next after the next. And, then years later, you would see that they were still so angry. Yes. Oh, you know, the anniversary of their loved one's death day or the anniversary of their birthdays or special occasions, they were still holding in so much anger and animosity. Mm -hmm. So one day I said, you know, maybe we could do something as a whole, you know, mm -hmm. find a, a safe haven where as crime survivors, we can come and meet at a central right. location and we can share our stories and not have fear of judgment or, you know, just mm -hmm. different things that, you feel once you right, um, right. have experienced Murder something. is something different. You know, I've been mm -hmm. experienced by death, unfortunately. I'm like almost the last one alive in my family as far as elders. Wow. So from my grandmother to, she lived till she was 99. She just went to sleep oh, and wow. never woke up one day. Amen. To my sister passing of a illness. Uh, she mm -hmm. passed of lupus and the complications of that. To my uncle just living of old age but not wanting to live right. So his mm -hmm. choices caused his death. You know, so... My purpose of saying that is death comes in different ways, yes. right. you know, yes. mm -hmm. but when someone is taken from you in a tra traumatic way like that, right. mm -hmm. it's right. a different feeling. Because nobody expects that. They mm -hmm. understand, you know, age and it's going to happen eventually because of your age or maybe even because of a sickness or something. Mm -hmm. But when it comes, you know, by gun violence, you know, I had a nephew, um, bless his soul, Juan Rollins, oh, who was baby. killed in um, Venice Park. Yes. You know, ni nicest young man, you know, people loved him. He friends all over. And it just seemed like, like you said, the youth are still angry. Mm -hmm. And something has to be done to take away this anger. But they also have to know that shooting each other is not the key. Not you know, all. because it's st now it's starting to happen more often. And it's starting to happen with younger yes. children. You know, before you would hear 18, 19, maybe mm -hmm. 20, 21. But mm -hmm. no, now it's even younger. 15, 16, yes. And yeah. Danielle, I know that you have experience, You had experienced the same thing with your son. Yes, Kelly and I both uh, were cousins. Uh, and we have both experienced mm -hmm. the same tragedy. Mm -hmm. She lost her son. I lost my son. 
And when I lost my son in 2016, he was 17 years old. Uh, he was shot at a party. Um, his assailant's still unknown. Mm -hmm. Here we are almost three years later, right. which is gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching as well, mm -hmm. to live every day to still not have any closure. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, we just came together. She said, you know what? When she touched my son's casket, she said, nephew, I'm going to do something about this. Mm -hmm. Even though we're cousins, we're still like sisters. Right. right. We've been together for... 30 plus years. Right. We watched each other's children grow up, mm -hmm. change their diapers, babysat each other. So it's all close knit family that's deeper than the bloodline. Mm -hmm. And she said to him, I'm going to do something, nephew. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to do something about this. Mm -hmm. And we, we've been doing a lot of research, and she's been doing a lot of investigation. We're doing a lot of reading, and the things that we're finding out that majority do not have our children our youth they do not have their best yes. interests at heart exactly. right. and kelly said we need to change laws mm -hmm. That's have right. to start with changing the laws mm -hmm. because they're not put in place to help or save our young adults our young boys our young men and even maybe, the young women as well and ready. it's too easy for a young person to get a gun yeah it's easier than getting a gallon of milk it is and how can sad. you how can you get your hands on a handgun quicker than you can go to the store and buy a gallon of exactly. milk you go to the store and there's no milk in the store but they can get a hold of a gun right and when we were growing up in the 80s i'm an 80s baby, i'm a 70s baby but an 80s growing up baby we fought with our hands yeah, exactly. we did. there wasn't any Weapons, um, right? That's right. So and then say. after you fought, y'all became friends we were friends. We played like together exactly. right afterwards. After we were yeah. just right back together again, and like nothing ever happened. But these days, a lot of these children they come from broken homes, as mm -hmm. we know. Um, I, I, you know, I a lot of people are always saying, you know, it starts at home. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I'll give you half, mm -hmm. five out of ten of that, because her and I fought tooth and nail with our babies. Mm -hmm. She even went as far as going out and snatching her son out of the street, mm -hmm. get in the house. But they sneak out of the windows. Mm -hmm. They have people calling them, hey, there's a party tonight. Come on, right, let's go. Right. We are not their only influence exactly. at the end of the day. Exactly. And we try, as much as we try to be strong black women, we try to be strong mothers, single mothers. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the fathers are sparringly in between mm -hmm. few and far which they could be more involved right. in their lives. Right. But we do double the work, mm -hmm. and it doesn't always start at home. No. I would like to correct people on that. You cannot always blame right. the home life. Exactly. These children grew up in beautiful homes. Right. They right. had every game, every, and then maybe that's the reason why. Maybe we should have took some things yes. from them. Yes. If and we would have went the that, opposite you, way. You've always been a hard worker. Exactly. Ever since I've known you. So. Beautiful birthday parties, right. outings, family events, everything. Maybe and we give them too much today. That's what I mean. They're spoiled. Yeah. They, what do they say? Spare the child? You know, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Spare the rod. Spare the rod. Spare the rod. There it is. Yes. Yeah. I you mean, know. we give them a little too much where they look at us as if, you're supposed to give it to me. Right. You're right. supposed to get. I'm supposed to have this game. I'm maybe supposed to, to have these sneakers. Right. Maybe you need to earn those three hundred and fifty dollars exactly. sneakers. Because if I'm not wearing three hundred and fifty dollars right. sneakers, you're not getting no three hundred and fifty dollars exactly. pair of sneakers. Where we just gave, you know. Yeah. So I, we fought tooth and nail, blood, sweat, and tears with our children. Mm -hmm. I talked with her child when he was in trouble. She talked with mine. There was outsiders, community leaders, church, advocate, everybody came. So why do they go this route is the question. Right. Why right. do they feel like outside is where they need to be or what they need to experience? Why? why? That's yeah, you know, and you really, because we read about it every day, and I did too, but you really don't understand it until it hits home. Now, in 2014, we lost my nephew to um, gun violence. My 22-year-old nephew, he was shot nine times in Atlantic City, Ken, uh, Kenny Sandor. Yeah. Uh, and he was shot in Atlantic City. And I remember when I got the call from my sister, and I was actually sitting on my bed playing when this happened. And I got that call. 
And I remember, you know, I think I was just numb. You know, I got up, got in my car. I went down to the police station because I said, I can't go to the crime scene. I can't see him laying out there like that. I just can't see that. So I went down to the police station. But, you know, I remember thinking, you know, what mentality is it just to take somebody's life? And, you know, whoever shot him, obviously they meant to kill him because he was shot nine times in his chest. You want, to, you want them dead. Well, no, I was going to get to that. You know, you get angry about it. And then I said, God, now I can actually feel what these mothers feel. Even though it was not my son, it was my nephew. Mm -hmm. Close you know, enough. it was my brother's son. Close enough. And a few months later, the young one of the young men that did this, they found his body. Mm. I remember my sister coming in the room with the article, and she said, well, justice. I said, no, that is not justice. Mm -hmm. Because you got to break the cycle. The cycle. That's right. You know, and killing since winning. this no, young this man. Point did not make me feel better. Right. right. And I know it right. did not make That's his just mother another feel family. better. Mm -hmm. You know, now this is another mother that has lost her another son. Another family, yes. Mm -hmm. you know, and unfortunately, maybe right. another child that lost their father. Father, mm -hmm. right, right. right. My, so it's... Yeah, my nephew had three children mm -hmm. that will never wow. know him because they were too young. Well, right. you So, know, you know, it's... how do you break that cycle? Right. What, what a and small world this is. And maybe we need to is. get together some of those ones that are involved. Not to cut you off. Man, man is the reason why I started okay. broken hearted due to gun violence. Right. Because okay. Laura. Laura. Okay. Is okay. A very, that's like my cousin. Yes. Okay. All right. And she's also part of Peace she, she okay. started okay. our organization together. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. And um, she was a big part of me reaching out to mothers like myself mm -hmm. to start broken hearted due to gun violence. And that started a year before Peace Amongst Youth. Okay. And that yeah. was just for mothers to get together mm -hmm. and vent. Because, see, they offer counseling services. Right. They offer, not saying that it's not out there, because it is. Mm -hmm. They have the alcove. They have family services. Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. different outlets for you to go to. But it's hard for a crime survivor to go there and say, my son was murdered. Right. When you're in a room full of people that may have died of cancer, yes. of, of old yes. age, you know, yes. to right. be that... Not the same. One person in the room, mm -hmm. it's like you're in a room full of people, but you're all alone. Mm -hmm. right. You understand? It's a different So it's, it's a different, different, it's a different world. And it's rage. It's a lot of rage. Yeah. I have a lot of rage inside of me. I'm emotional. Mm -hmm. I cry. Mm -hmm. And Lady D has been with me on a trip. Mm -hmm. You know, she yes. knows I've lost my faith in mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. When my son passed, this is a child that I carried. And I yeah. have three other boys. Mm -hmm. But I carried him, I birthed him, I raised him, I tried to keep him together, mm -hmm. and then he was taken away from me. Why, Lord? Why? Right. And I question this over and over and over again. And then you think about it. I know the, one of the young men that killed my nephew, they showed up at the funeral. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I said, God, how can these young people be so cold-blooded like that, yes. could think like that? You know, does he realize you took a life? Mm -hmm. You took somebody, he's never going to come back. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he'll he never have the opportunity to be whatever he wanted to be. I mean, it was just the arrogance. You know what I mean? Sending emails, yeah, I shot that, you know what? And I said, Lord, I have mercy, boy. These kids are so going. different. Like, you know, it's so like different. it's nothing to take a life. Like, it was nothing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Following um, Lori around, the, you know, the store and things like that. And I said, God, we have got to change their mentality. Yes, and that's what you we're know? all about. That's what yeah. Peace Amongst You is all about. I seen yeah. you guys out the other day. What was that all about? Um, the uh, newspaper article? Showing support. Showing support. Mm -hmm. um, young lady was um, murdered last week. 15, 15 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah old. I, I read about and, that. Um, Why? Yes. For what reason? We still, we don't have a clue yeah. why these babies are doing what they're doing, but we're trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like, for, we can't think for them as adults. Right, right. You know, so it's time, they're just so tired of so many empty promises. Right. right. You know, it's hard to get them in the building to even express what they feel. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what, that to was, that's what, what I was they need. Say. You understand, mm -hmm. like, a big purpose of my organization is to bring awareness. Because right. my thing is awareness equals change. Right. You know, when my boys were getting in trouble, I would reach out for help and I would be told there's no funding. Programs are shut down. Right. Da, 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 da. And I would take it for face value. 
Okay, they say it's no funding, they say it's no programs. But the more I started looking into things, I started finding out, wait, there's millions out here. Mm -hmm. There's money out here. It's just a matter of us being able to collaborate together to go get it. Right. You understand? Our babies are dying and all you see is GoFundMe accounts. Yeah. There's compensation for these families out here. Mm -hmm. It's called victim's compensation. It's been established since 1971. Right. But when my son was murdered in 2012, I don't recall being offered that. Mm -hmm. And wow. if I was offered it, based on the qualifications and the regulations to receive those funds, I would not have been awarded mm -hmm. the funding. Wow. What I'm finding out is even though these services are available, we don't know about them right. in our urban, low-income color communities. Right. And then once we find out about them, we're denied because it's so much red tape mm -hmm. that we don't qualify for the services. Wow. And then what happens is the money that is allowed it for our communities, when we don't go for it, it's sent other places. Places, yeah. You understand? So mm -hmm. that's a big part of also what we do is we bring awareness to what's out there for us. We're working on changing policies. We're working on changing le legislation. We, I was just in um, Trenton in October, uh, Bill S-498, which deals with victims' comp to change what, what defines a victim mm -hmm. and to change some of the way the laws are put in place now so that more funding and finances can come to our communities and to our babies to get the help that we need. Okay. You know, because we can pray all we want. Right. But okay. if there's no action behind that prayer, exactly. that, you know, it, prayer can only go so far with no action to work with it. That's you understand right. what I'm saying? Right. And you need funding to do so. Mm -hmm. Everything's at a cost. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many places I went to get help, but because we are, because of our income bracket, mm -hmm. they don't, they don't want to invest. Mm -hmm. They think it's just like a waste to, mm -hmm. in their minds. But our babies are dying and our families are distraught. You understand? They want to diagnose our youth with ADHD. They're not going, mm -mm. try PTSD. Mm -hmm. Try a five-year-old's brother, even maybe not murder, but just being incarcerated, right. you know, taken right. out of his life. See, trauma comes in different ways. It it's not always does. about right. violent crimes, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm so tired of them diagnosing kids with ADHD. Mm -hmm. Drop P T S D. Absolutely. -E or whatever the alphabet is. Never even heard because of that. Because back in, in the day when we were growing up, I ain't never heard never of no heard of A B C right. no whatever it is. It. I never heard of it because when our kids was growing up, if something was wrong with them, you know, they got dealt with. That's right. You know, so now if they act out of order, they you, they want to fill them up with drugs. Yes. Mm -hmm. So one way or the other, they killing them. You know, they're killing them with the drugs because they're giving them a new name about something mm -hmm. that's wrong with them. And nobody's really dealing with the real problem, problem right. of what these kids is, is suffering. Absolutely. You know, so I, I'm, I'm Even really with the tired mothers. of that. Even the first she went, response yes. when I went to go get, because I'm like, okay, something's wrong. I didn't know what depression was. Because I said, I got some depression, I got something for that. Anxiety, whatever. Like, in our com urban communities, that's a myth. Right. Mm -hmm. Like because it's we've not been dealing real. with it all our life. You know what and I mean? You deal with so it. it's like anxiety, depression, but the year of my son's anniversary of his death, mm -hmm. I was fine in my mind for the first couple months. Mm -hmm. But when that December came around, oh, something happened to a girl. Mm -hmm. What I could accept two months ago, I couldn't accept. You know, right. what I could deal with, I could no longer deal with. And I'm like, well, what's going on with me? Can't sleep no more. Restless nights. Go to sleep at midnight, back up at four. What's, what's something's wrong, you know? So I reached out to behavioral health. Mm -hmm. And they gave me a white pill for this and a red pill for this and a yellow mm -hmm. pill for this. And this is to let you sleep and this is to help you if you get anxiety. And if and I'm, okay. And by the time you finish taking so I took all one that, one regimen. I, I did, one time. <laughs> one 24-hour period. She did her period. research on these pills. Mm -hmm. And, and found out I what said, the, well, what they were for. I'm not bipolar. I'm not schizophrenic. <laughs> I took the medicine back and I said, well, sir, I just want help. Like, I want to deal and cope with what I'm dealing with. I don't right. want mm -hmm. right. to cover it up with this medication right. that you're giving me because I'm not crazy. You know, I'm sad, mm -hmm. but what you're giving me is going to make me crazy. Mm -hmm. I was stuck. And you you're going to depend on it. And, and that's, what I'm, that's what's happening now. A lot of the mothers that are in my organization, sad to say, if they were recovering addicts, they are now addicts again. 
You understand? Mm -hmm. If they were never addicts, they, they are now dependent on these medications wow. to Drugs. get through what they're dealing with. Yep. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's so much that need to be talked about that we don't like to talk about. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, right. to continuously say my son was murdered at 13, that's a wound that took me a long time to talk about today. Mm -hmm. I couldn't talk about this six years ago. Mm -hmm. I couldn't talk about this four years ago. You understand? But and somebody got to talk about it. Yes, yeah, Because we got to gotta bring some type of change out here yes. within our community. We can't continuously wait for others to do it for us. Because mm -hmm. we got the resources to do it if mm -hmm. we could learn to unite. And the children are still getting killed. Absolutely. Yes, so something has to be done, and it has to be done right now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, we can't even wait no longer mm -hmm. because this, how old was the young lady? was 15 years old? Yes. yes. And that was what a couple of days ago. Yes, last week, by an eighteen-year-old. And look at the babies that's going to jail for the rest of their lives. Yes, murder. that's, so a, that's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you lose mm -hmm. a life, and then you give a life, so right. to say, because right. you're giving a life away to the state exactly. right. for the rest of their lives. And it's it's, it's torment everywhere. It's right. just, it's it's just torment. Right. So we actually. Besides educating, we also try to have the kids that need to be reached. Mm -hmm. We try to have meetings with them. We try to have them mentored. I bring them to my home. I cook dinners for them. I feed them. Mm -hmm. Half of these children out Food here are works. starving. Mm -hmm. Food always works. Food works. Food yeah. works. They're yeah. starving. Wow. They're just surviving off a quarter bag of chips and a dollar pizza at the Arab store, at these Indians who are getting rich off our babies, mm -hmm. these Bangladesh Pakistan. Right. They come into our community, they buy a store, and then they're selling our children the cigarette Lucy's, cigarellos, the cigars, mm -hmm. and nothing mm -hmm. nutritious. But you can't go in there and get a gallon of milk. There's no milk in there. If it is in there, it's, it's expired. It's outdated. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're also poisoning our children. They let them stand outside the stores, they let them do nothing, just hanging around. Do something. It, they're not doing nothing. They're not doing well. You can do right. that. That's what you I know, mean, they're up yeah. to no right. good. You yeah. Know? yeah. Right. And it's sad. You know, our communities were never like that. We had black-owned stores growing up. Exactly. I remember Shabazz yes. in the inlet. Shabazz. Yes. I, I grew yeah. up in the inlet. Yes. The <laughs> yes. We, you know, we had real family-oriented on stores. Mm -hmm. It was just a whole different world then. I don't know what happened. Well, you know, we had, I can remember growing up, we had a lot of programs for right. the youth. Right. I was involved in one when I was in high school away. called Upward Bound. Yes, mm -hmm. I remember the Upward, Upward Bound, Bound program. Yes. Yes. Right, so the programs that they need, you know, the mm -hmm. activities that they need, they aren't there. They took they, everything you know, away. They took music away. They really away. focused to help our youth. Yes, right. Now there's I mean. programs out there. Yes. This is what yes. Dr. Lois is. Mm -hmm. But are they to help our to really help them or right. is it just a facade for the moment for the funding that's available, available right. Right. that's connected to us mm -hmm. whole that's, that, to that. that's what we because mm -hmm. the programs are there mm -hmm. but we need effective programs we need right. people that really genuinely want to reach and save our babies mm -hmm. right. and it not be a paycheck at the end of the day exactly, exactly. Right. people that love our kids yes. mm -hmm. you know that want to do something for them that want to help them that want to see them grow that want to see them and, uh, you know, know, know that when they go to school that they're going to learn something mm -hmm. instead of, them, like you said, a paycheck or just coming in and whatever. Y'all do whatever. Okay. I have a 14-year-old, okay? Mm -hmm. um, mine was also a double-edged sword when my son was murdered. It happened on my 12-year-old's birthday. Oh. So for the rest of his life. Yeah. He hates his it's my, he, he, my son just told me last night, Mom, I'm atheist. I said, oh, what do you goodness. mean? He, he said, Mom, I don't believe in God. What do you mean? He's like, I'm bad luck. He said, how is God going to take my brother on my birthday? Oh. He feels like he's bad luck. How do you deal with this? Yeah. You know, this is an everyday thing. Yeah. I mean, we're talking 2016 this happened, 2012 when that happened, but this is every day. You may right. say it's six years ago. You may say it's three years ago. Are you kidding me? Every day. Change shoes with me. Right. Put on my shoes. Let me wear yours. You wear mine, and then you tell me. Yeah, right. It's yeah. horrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it starts with awareness. It starts with voting. Mm -hmm. It starts with demanding the change that's out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, 
I was never big in voting. Mm -hmm. Just from the city politics from growing up as a kid, which is right. a sad thing. And me hearing, oh, it's empty lies, da 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 So I never really focused on um, mayor elections, freeholders mm -hmm. elections, assembly yeah. mm -hmm. elections. Like, those little small elections matter. Exactly. You know, those people really control and have a lot of say of oh, what's going what on in our community. Yes. Like that 2020 census, baby, mm -hmm. we got to get on board for that. Mm -hmm. You understand? Cause, but a lot of our people are afraid because of backgrounds and right, charges right. and things of that nature, which if we don't be accounted for, our housing is going to be affected. That's right. Our education is going to be affected. Mm -hmm. The Section 8, the food stamps, mm -hmm. all that stuff that the we see. Public the assistance. assistance. Yes. If we are not accounted for, all of that stuff will be taken away from us yes. slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. And it's happening. So let me tell you, so if there is a, 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 parent, a mother, a young mother, older mother, and a parent that's out there and have went through what you guys have went through, how can they reach you to be a part or to just come and maybe talk? You know, maybe they just need somebody to talk to. How can they reach you? Well, we're, um, we're out of the turning point in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. we, we host um, an event once a month. Um, other than that, we're on Facebook. We're on all the social media networks. And we also have a, a website, paymovingforward.com. Okay. So, um, yeah. And it's called Pain. Pay, 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 it's P -A -Y. Peace Amongst Youth. It's okay, an okay. acronym for Peace, peace Amongst Youth. Youth. So it's okay. paymovingforward.com. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's very good. I'm, I'm so glad to have finally gotten you guys Hello, lady. Here. Good. We've been busy. I know. We've been, oh, and, it, and you know what? It helps us. It's yeah, like our therapy in a way. It yeah. helps us. I'm, the last event we just had, I was crying. You never know what I'm going to be doing. Right, you know, right, I'm, I'm, right. I'm, my emotions are out of control. My hormones, right. my mind. I don't know what the, I'm going to be doing next. And you, you still know? have children. But so I still the have the strength. How about that? that. Exactly. Amen. I still go. Yes. Right. Day to day, I still go. And, yes. you know, and that goes back to our ministry, Sister Strengthening yes. Sisters. Mm -hmm. Because we strengthen each, mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. And you all stepping out and doing this just encourage others to come out because yes. others that were dealing or feeling the same thing that you felt. And you're certainly allowed to feel everything that you're feeling. That's right, that's right. You know what I mean? But this, the big this thing, right here is not a one size fits all. Right, right. You right. know, a lot of people think, oh, you do this, you do that. When no. you're dealing with grief mm -mm. and you're dealing with tra traumatic experiences, what may take me a year to recover from may take her 10 years to recover right, from. Right, right. You understand? So it's not, and what may work for me may not work for you. Right, So right. that's where you have to come in and find out what works for you as an individual. Mm -hmm. And you also have to be able to identify what you're feeling. Right. You can't fix it if you can't identify it. Right. You know, if you don't know what you're going through, there's no way to begin to heal from that process. Right, and, and you all are there to tell them that it's okay to feel what you're feeling. Exactly. Because I will say it again, until that happened to my nephew, I would look at it and say, oh, my heart breaks. But when it actually happened, it right. literally breaks. You right. know what I mean? It tears. Right. It tears a part of you away. Right. Then I could really feel it. What I, I would like to see is I would like to see you guys come back again. Yes, maybe we like maybe once back. every yes. other month or something, yes. you just follow just up and let guess. us know what's mm -hmm. going on, educate. how your movement is mm -hmm. going on, and just well, educate. Will, we have and what we can do that to we help. need some help yes. back in and some legislation laws that we're mm -hmm. fighting for mass incarceration and for crime survivors. Because mm -hmm. right. we're dealing with a double sword in our communities. We have yes. mothers that are burying our babies in, going to visit them behind the walls. Well, yeah. Right. So, yeah, right. Definitely. I certainly am happy. Thank you to come on here to talk about your story, such yeah. a you know uh, amazing story for two young women to have had to go through. Um, there you've had it, um, Kelly and Danielle, right here on Sister Strengthening Sisters <laughs> Talk Show. Finally got them on here, and we're going to hear from them again and try to keep up and follow up as to everything that they are doing because they're doing a lot of things in the community if you need help you need to get in touch with them if you've experienced
experience this or want to be a part or even just want to donate some time or maybe finances, you need to get in touch with Kelly or um, Danielle and make that happen. Amen? Because Amen. that's what it's all about. It's all about strengthening and making things happen for them and for other people in the community with children who were taken away, either incarcerated or by death. Sister Strengthening Sisters, right here on Catch the Fire TV Network. Be sure to join us on next week again when we'll have more guests for you right here with myself, Lady D, along with my co-host, Dr. Lois L. Have a great week. Be blessed. God bless you. You've been watching Sisters Strengthening Sisters on CTF TV.